This is the Shikaku, a Tier 7 aircraft carrier. Yes, after the airstrike test a few months ago, American and Japanese carriers are back, and they're here to stay. Now, in addition to Tier 3 and Tier 5 carriers, we have Tier 7. These new carriers have significant differences and advantages over the Tier 5 variant, and in this video we're going to cover all of that. So let's take a look at the setup for the ship and the commander. The commander is Taman Yamaguchi. His base trait is increase your ship's AA armament damage. It's Typhoon. As for inspirations, I have King. It's I come prepared. It improves your ship AA armament range. So between the first inspiration for King and the base trait of Yamaguchi, you're getting the most out of your AA armament. The secondary inspiration is Franz von Hipper, increases secondary battery range and its shell grouping. As far as the skills go, the first skill is Swatting at Flies, increases the damage of your aircraft carrier's AA armament yet again, so this is adding to the AA. The second skill is One Way Ticket, increases the torpedo damage. Third skill is Hidden Threat, it improves the concealment and maximum HP of your torpedo bombers. And I selected this for Yamaguchi. For King, I selected this, so I'm trying uh, both options here. For Yamaguchi, I'm picking the Torpedo Bombers to decrease their detectability and it increases the Torpedo Bombers HP. This is the health of the squadron. Fourth skill is Look at Me Now, it increases the ship's concealment rating. And for the Legendary skill, we are Legion, it increases your Torpedo Bombers speed reduces the damage to your aircraft carrier for as long as you're in the proximity of an enemy. And you can see I have Yamaguchi ranked up to 15.2. .2 is the legendary rank. Let's take a look at the upgrades for the Shikaku. For the first upgrade slot I have Flight Control Mod 1. It uh, decreases the aircraft preparation rate by 15%. The second upgrade is Secondary Battery Mod 2. It increases the uh, firing range of the Secondary Battery by 20% and it decreases the dispersion by 20%. Third upgrade is Concealment Mod 1. It uh, decreases the detectability range by 10% and increases the incoming fire dispersion by 5%. The fourth upgrade is Air Groups Mod 3. It increases the aircraft return speed by 25% and it increases the health of either the dive bombers or the torpedo bombers by 4%. And I have the rest of the upgrades here. I have the uh, aircraft uh, torpedo bomber upgrade. It increases the attack unit size to 3. Restoration time is 61 seconds, 15 aircraft on deck. If you don't select these aircraft upgrades, you get the attack unit size is 2 and the aircraft on deck is 10. So you definitely want to do this. And you can see I have the uh, dive bombers here selected for the second slot. And the final slot is the uh, Shikaku Hull B. It increases the survivability hit points up to 51,400. Let's look at the loadout. You can see here that in addition to the engine cooling consumable for each of the bombers or the torpedo planes, you also have a fighter patrol. Um, there's three of them. They patrol the area and automatically attack enemy aircraft for 60 seconds. The reload time is only 10 seconds and uh, you have three of these consumables. Down here on these auto consumables uh, that basically come with the ship. You have an unlimited uh, damage control party. Um, duration is 60 seconds. Reload time is 90 seconds. And you have four fighter auto consumables which follow the ship and automatically attack the enemy aircraft and activates automatically whenever your aircraft carrier is spotted by an enemy. The duration of the consumable is 60 seconds. Reload time is 40 seconds and you have four of them. As for the camouflage, I created a Type 1 Permanent Premium Camouflage. I have it maxed out to Grade 4, so I get maximum sea detectability range of minus 
incoming fire dispersion of plus four and a half percent. Let's look at the stats. Survivability is 51,400 hit points. Torpedo damage reduction is 25%. Let's look at the aircraft. We'll go with the torpedo bombers first. Hit points is 3741. That's for the entire squadron. Maximum speed though is 164 knots and this is faster than any of the American airplanes. Attack unit size is 3. There are 6 aircraft per squadron. There are 15 aircraft on deck. Restoration time is 61 seconds. Maximum torpedo damage is 7945, which I think is the highest torpedo damage in the game for aircraft carriers. Torpedo speed is 50 knots, which I think is pretty close to the highest as well. And torpedo range of 5.5 kilometers is higher than their American counterparts. Okay, let's look at the dive bombers. The hit points is 3318 for the entire squadron. Maximum speed is 166 knots, which is the highest speed of any aircraft on an aircraft carrier in the game. Attack unit size is 3, 6 aircraft per squadron, 15 aircraft on deck. Aircraft restoration time is 65 seconds. Maximum bomb damage is 9620, which is a little bit lower than their American counterparts. Fire setting chances is 55%. Let's look at the artillery now. Secondary armament has 6.1 kilometers, which is pretty good. Reload time is 6 seconds, which is pretty good. Uh, maximum shell damage is 2100. You can see it looks like there are 8 secondary armaments on the ship. AA defenses, there are quite a few. This is their numbers. As far as maneuverability goes, 34 knots maximum speed is great. That's up there with cruisers and some destroyers. Rudder shift time, 13 seconds is pretty good, but this is all going to be controlled by the autopilot anyway. You can control the ship manually, but you're going to mostly be using autopilot. Concealment is down to 7.9 kilometers, which is pretty good. Let's take a look at the armor. Okay, you can see that uh, most of the armor is 17 to 24 on the main deck and the hull. The, the bridge component does have 34 to 75 millimeter and the tower is 6 to 14 millimeters. But you can see that it looks like the citadel is kind of protected a little bit here. So let's remove the armor and take a look at the citadel. Okay, so you can see the Citadel is below the waterline, so that is great. Uh, you might not take as much Citadel damage as other ships, so that is a very good sight. Okay, so let's take a look at the overview. Stealthy aircraft, aircraft with good concealment. Fast aircraft, aircraft with above average speed, and we certainly saw that. Secondary reach, above average secondary battery range, and we certainly saw that as well. The Shukaku was a heavy aircraft carrier and was designed on the basis of the Hiraiu, using the experience gained in building ships of the same type. Compared to her predecessor, she was larger and boasted superior armor and AA armament. During World War II, the ship's AA capabilities were significantly enhanced. She entered service in 1941, and there were two ships in the series. So that's it for the setup of the commander and the ship. Let's take the Shikaku out in a standard battle and check out some highlights. All right, we're in standard. You can see we're in hot spot. The thing about the uh, Shikaku is it has really powerful torpedoes compared to the Lexington. The bomb damage seems to be a little less. Here you're going to see that I'm looking at the mini-map and I'm going to set the autopilot to a different location. Found that you kind of always want to move it from its default uh, position. So we're going to start out by uh, taking off with the torpedo bombers. I'm looking around a little bit there, see what the camouflage looks like. So we're going to take off. 
And I'm checking the mini map again. And we're just going to go out here and see if we can spot some uh, of the enemy ships and help out our uh, our team by spotting the ships as well as uh, trying to inflict some damage with the torpedoes and eventually the HE bombs. I found that these airplanes are so fast that when you're making your torpedo run you have to start at five kilometers versus the four kilometers that we saw in Lexington and even at that the planes are faster so they close a lot faster on the ships the torpedoes are faster they can uh, inflict almost 8,000 damage hit points and you're going to get most of your damage for the most part with torpedoes even though as we'll see later the HE bombs will cause damage uh, especially when they start a fire so here's the Richie Lou he's not really moving and you can see we're going to get three good torpedo hits right there and that is just awesome good way to start out the battle so i'm going to come around and try to take another shot at uh, another ship here this you see the aa really takes out uh, your your flight pretty effectively. You're going to take off in some more torpedo bombs because uh, the torpedoes really do inflict the highest amount of damage. We're up to 16,000 damage already. But you can see there are a large number of battleships in the game and that's generally what you want to try to go after as they're larger and slower targets. So here there is a battleship over in the channel over here. He's not really moving, it doesn't look like. There's an Iowa over here. But I'm going to swing around and try to get this uh, battleship, which is kind of a sitting duck. He is closing in on me. And so this, the closing speed of the torpedoes means that if I'm moving too fast or the ship is moving too fast, the torpedoes won't even arm by the time they hit. And that appears to be what happened there. But you see the Richie Lou is right in the flight path, so I am going to take a shot here. I've started um, releasing the torpedoes before I really want to because of the length of the dive. You'll see that the bombers will pull out a little bit quicker than the Tier 3 and Tier 5. And also, if you wait too long, you're going to get blown out by the AA. So I've started releasing uh, quicker than I really wanted to. I'm going to move the aircraft carrier again. Never want it really sitting still. So now I'm going to swing around and try to get a broadside on the Iowa. At least uh, increase my chances with a better angle. And so you can see I started the dive a little bit more than four kilometers. I have pulled back on the stick to really slow down. And I'm just going to stay here and see if I get some hits. It looks like I will. He's moving really slowly. I end up with two hits. That's really good. We're up to 30,000 damage already on five hits and one flooding. So the damage was counting a little bit, but he, uh, he deployed the damage control. So that stops. So if I hit him again, uh, we should be good to go for a while because the damage will not be able to... Um, be activated because it, it is on the cooldown. So now I'm on HE bombs and the thing that I've noticed with these HE bombs is each bomber appears to only have one bomb and this is uh, as opposed to the Lexington which each bomber has two bombs. So in the Lexington I was able to get up to six hits with a three, uh, three attack unit strike. Now the, the most you're going to see here is three hits but these hooks will start some fires and you will see some significant damage building on the Iowa here. So this looks like a pretty good lineup 
and you can see right on the nose is when you let them go and there we got three hits and two fires so that's awesome we're really going to start racking up the damage here and so here is where the he bombs will make up the difference on the torpedoes because of the fires and when you can start more than one fire you're really going to rack up some damage uh, pretty quickly significant damage too we're up to 46,000. This is getting close to my average on aircraft carriers, which is 50,000. So once I've reached 50,000, I've officially had what I think is a pretty good game for myself. So we're just going to keep going here and see if we can get some more hits, some more damage. You can see we are still lighting up the red team for, for our blue team here. So this is good that we're coming in to do this attack. And the Iowa looks like another good lineup here, so hopefully we'll get some more good hits. So there it goes. Another three hits and another fire. So this is really turning out to be a bad day for the Iowa, a good day for me. I'm up to 60,000 already. 59,000. There's 60,000. And you can see that the match is kind of even by the number of ships that each side currently has. So we're just going to have to go back and keep hammering away at these guys and see if we can start sinking some of these ships. So now we've just taken the lead. Ship-wise, another ship went. So we are up to 66,000 damage, so this is looking really good. Going to go back and get this Iowa. He is looking kind of vulnerable, but he's gone. So that's uh, kind of too bad. That, that was some some easy scores for me. It seemed like. So now I'm just going to go hunting around and look for some more battleships, or maybe even the aircraft carrier. I, I think the aircraft carrier is back here. So the, the ship score is 7-3. to three. So it looks like we are going to win the match, so that's good. And I'm just going to swing around here and try to get a straight-on attack run on this battleship, or the best angle I can get. So there you see I start my attack run. And Our victory is in nothing. Going to swing back around. But normally what I've found is on the second attack run, you do normally, for whatever reason, you do get blown out by the AA. You can rarely get another second runoff. It looks like I will. There's a hit and another fire, which is good. We're up to 70,000 damage. And the ship score is down to three for the blue team and two for the red team, but it does kind of look like we're still going to win. This is looking like a pretty good match uh, damage points wise, so it'll be interesting to see where I end up on the leaderboard when the match is over with. We're up to 76,000. This is looking great. And 78,812 is where it's going to stay. So five torpedo hits, one flooding, seven HE bomb hits, and four fires. So you can see that uh, a lot of the damage really was racked up by the fires caused by the HE bombs. But the torpedoes do inflict a significant amount of damage at almost 8,000 damage points per hit. So there's the aircraft carrier. Looks like it should be an easy target. But I've noticed that the AA on a lot of these aircraft carriers are very efficient. They really do take out your flight. I, I suspect it's because they may have their commanders ranked up to 16. And you can see that the torpedoes are just too slow. The aircraft carrier is moving too fast. I should have aimed quite a ways in front of the aircraft carrier and We've got three minutes left. I'm going to take another 
another run at them. But I am kind of far away, so I kind of doubt whether I'll be able to get there in time. There you see, the battle is ended. Victory, we win. 164,690 credits, 78,811 damage. Huh, but you can see I finished in seventh place on the leaderboard. That's it for the Shokaku. Overall, a good aircraft carrier will inflict a lot of torpedo damage, a lot of HE bomb damage if you can start fires. This is the Jaguar, and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it.